Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hacking with Friends. Today, I didn't turn up any friends, so instead we dug up one of our production gremlins named Michael. Hi, I'm Michael. Michael here is also a, a fellow co-host on the Nullbyte YouTube channel. Big deal. Yeah, I know. And one of his videos is one of the top performers with over how many views? Do you know? Two, three hundred thousand? Three hundred thousand yeah, views. It's, it's at least in the top thirty videos. Well, congratulations. That's With very other nice twenty nine being yours. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be going over dorking. And it's perfect to have Michael out here because as he knows, he's the biggest dork <laughs> that I know. So we're going to go ahead and go into how powerful dorks can really be by mm -hmm. taking a look at what Google Dorks are and how we can use them. So, Michael, do you know what Google dorking is? Um, isn't it like sort of like advanced Googling, something like that, right? Pretty much. So, yeah. advanced Googling is a good term because uh, uh, most search engines are searching kind of uh, giant databases mm -hmm. in order to find information, and we as humans have to access those databases. Right. So, the world's information is basically contained in databases, and the way that we get information out is we make calls to those databases and it returns some sort of result. That's just a general rule of databases. And if you've ever worked with a database besides Google, like maybe you've done something at like a court filing place where you have to use a database there to pull information out. Maybe you're in trucking, like you were uh, in our second to last live stream, and you have to go into online databases of states all the time. Maybe you're in business and you have to go through the uh, Secretary of State's business registration database. These are all things that require you to put in very specific search terms to get an exact response back. Because usually we're just looking for one record, one piece of information. Now Google's a little different. Google has to anticipate that you don't know what you're asking. You could be partially illiterate and still trying to use Google, and it's gonna make its very best guess to try to figure out what the hell you're talking about and give you like a broad range of information that may or may not be what you're looking for. That's how a search engine works. It's not quite the same as a database, but in this case, what we're gonna do is learn to use Google a little bit more like a database. Uh, so that the same kind of uh, the same kind of like things we would do in like the Secretary of State database, where we're using very specific search terms, we're going to do that to Google instead. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the step of learning how these search terms work, so we can create filters. And our goal here is, if we are a researcher, if we're a journalist, if we're someone that's responsible for finding information, we don't want you know to do a Google search and then have a hundred thousand results. That means we've actually done a terrible search. Um, really, what we're looking for is the ability to run the exact right search and come up with the one right piece of information. And there's a lot of applications here. One of them is, let's say that you are a journalist or a researcher, and you want to find all this, as much information as possible that's in the public domain that's just out there. And this would be a way that you could scrape information off of maybe a company or for uh, some sort of specific organization that uh, might be out there and accessible, but wouldn't show up on a Google search or would be so buried in other stuff that you wouldn't be able to get to exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. Now, you could also be a hacker. So what do you think would be really useful um, about Google dorking for an attacker or a red team? Well, I mean, there's the obvious OSINT of like, oh, I want to collect information about a company that I'm a hack. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if you're making like a, a word list to do database hacking, brute forcing, yeah. brute forcing, like you could easily like scrape a website or do something like that and collect list of words that they use on their website. So maybe that's more likely smart, to be in a password. Smart. A lot of businesses like will also make passwords and stuff out of like pieces of their vision statement and stuff to like yeah. rem remind their employees to like yeah. re like remember these or, things. Or I've seen a lot of restaurants use like their address or their phone number as their mm -hmm. Wi-Fi password or, or stuff like that. So uh, I mean, there's the obvious stuff like that. But then also like, isn't this the kind of thing where like, if a, the site's like super insecure, sometimes they have like databases of like unhashed passwords or like log files, log files, or log you know files. something stupid like that. And it could, you, in the best case scenario, you could find a surveillance camera that's mm -hmm. open to the internet that doesn't require a password that's just happily serving this up to the open internet. So just be aware that this sort of thing is pretty crazy with what you can find because once you know what you're looking for, you can use Google like a very specific database, not just like a general search engine, but as a database and make database calls the same way that anyone would in like an SQL database or something like that, which we learned a little bit about with Tim.
-hmm. So uh, what we're going to do here today is learn how these sorts of uh, kind of filters, we'll call them, can work to narrow down data or bring you back something specific. And I figure we'll even do some spontaneous demonstrations that may or may not work. We always mm -hmm. know that demos are a little risky. <laughs> live uh, demos. But what we're going to do then is basically try to do a live demo where um, I use the information to locate either vulnerable uh, like uh, websites on the internet so we can show off some things like capturing passwords or just otherwise be able to take a look at how we can use these search terms to find very specific information that would be totally buried if we were just using general search terms. Yeah. So, so this kind of reminds me of that like notion that most people don't even go past that first page on Google. Mm -hmm. So, like this is really burrowing down into that like ten ten thousandth page on Google and finding that, that answer that we're looking that needle in the haystack. It's pretty cool. Yeah, needle in the haystack is exactly what this is because if you know. Uh, this is a very familiar thing to do if you've learned a little bit about Wireshark. Mm -hmm. It's very familiar if you've ever used even just like filters in like an Excel sheet or something like that to create a very right. basic formula. You are just putting together a couple building blocks that says, hey, I'm looking for everything that looks like this, mm -hmm. and then exclude anything that doesn't look like that, and then match it to stuff that looks like this. And you can create something that's just three parts but very specific and get the one exact answer you're looking for. So another benefit for pen testers or hackers is, as you said, OSINT and being able to find things like vulnerable documents that are just out in the open. And anytime you're looking for, let's say, a, a person that you want to target in a phishing campaign to mm -hmm. do your job and show that there's vulnerabilities, you could use the open source uh, intelligence that's out there, uh, all the PDF documents that are related to the company, all the information that's public, to figure out who's in charge of something, who they communicate with from outside the company, and what that correspondence looks like in order to try to get them to trick uh, to trick them into uh, opening something that they shouldn't. And in general, this would be maybe finding like legal businesses that do business with the company you're looking at and uh, maybe sending a phishing email from that law firm that maybe doesn't have that good cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, because they have external third-party contacts at their business, will let their guard down with people they've worked with before. But these are attack vectors that uh, attackers really look for. So Google dorking in an offensive hacker sense is really, really powerful. And it's probably the first thing you should do when you start doing an open source intelligence investigation or just do general recon before mm -hmm. going in and doing pen testing. So, so question there though, how targeted is this really? Like, so I can target an individual, but like I wouldn't target say Instagram.com and look for an open database. If I'm looking for like an open database, it's really more of a shotgun approach where I'm just like searching for open databases on that Google's found, right? Right. So it has to be something that's been exposed to Google and crawled by it. Okay. So a lot of these things will also kind of work with like Shodan. So mm. that's a, another analogy of a search engine that's just a giant database you're making very specific queries to. Um, in this case, uh, if it's something like Instagram or Facebook or something that is its own database where you would need to use your, uh, your own search terms in that database in order to be able to bring information out of it. I mean, most information on the internet is dark information. It's right. actually connected to a database that you have to enter queries into to find. So the, the portals to that information are probably indexed on Google, but mm -hmm. you would need to go to whatever the, the interface is, the application programming interface, the API, and enter in search terms and get them back. Right. Um, Google has indexed some of this, but not all of it. So for example, like Google hasn't scraped all of Instagram or Facebook's um, you know, entire database. Right. Other businesses have, and then like put it with tags onto Google, so you can kind of almost get the same mm -hmm. effect, but um, you know they don't go in in and of themselves. So you can't see like you know right. someone's private like profile if you just happen to know them, mm -hmm. uh, unless you do you actually log in and then make that yeah. query as for for an example. And, and also, does this interface well with like Google image searching? Can you like Google dork image sort? Search? Yeah, or you can. So you can use a, a Google's uh, image search as one of the search terms and use other uh, okay. filters on it. So we'll try it and see that maybe if it works. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, we might be able to find like you know a vulnerable version of a website that's hosting mm -hmm. a particular image. So if you were, let's say, uh, US Cyber Command and we were looking for like terrorists that left a website that was mm -hmm. unsecure, we could basically find an image they were using all across their websites and then do a search for websites that have that image and then look mm -hmm. for ones that are running something that we know is vulnerable. Okay, cool. Yeah. You want to get started? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so I have a bunch of different Google dorks that I'm going to go through. But first, I want to show off this really great resource, which is the Google Hacking Database. So okay. the, 
Yeah. So the Google hacking database is wild. It's basically hackers who are figuring out specific Google search terms that will bring you back like real time vulnerable databases or exposed applications that shouldn't be public. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is basically how people will find massive data dumps or um, companies that have responsibility for a lot of people's data, just leaving these databases totally exposed. Wow. Okay, so kind of gonna ask an obvious question here, but why would Google keep this active? Why would Google let this happen all the time? Like information if it... wants to be free. <laughs> okay. I mean, like, but I mean, also, like, you know, in this case, it's not Google's policy to step in and be like, oh no, your website's on the internet. Like, they're just right. assuming, like, if you flip the switch on and just mm -hmm. allow access, they're going to come in and crawl. There are right. things you can set, like, uh, like robots.txt and stuff like that, to tell them, hey, don't crawl these parts of the page okay. or don't include this. But if you don't do that, like, Google doesn't know mm -hmm. not to crawl you. Like, they just assume that it's fine. So right. unless it's kind of an opt out thing. If you expose yeah. something to the internet, Google's job, like their whole business is based on indexing stuff that's connected right. to the internet. They don't discriminate between like a good connection or a bad connection unless there's actually malicious behavior. So mm -hmm. a stupid connection is like perfectly fine by them. So so they don't have any kind of like anti dorking measure like Oh, I got hit with it. It was like, one of those robots.txt thing. Okay. Or sorry, no, I'm sorry. Uh, one of those uh, captchas. Oh, okay. Uh, just so like, rate please identify the car so that in the future we don't crash as often and we're right. fine. Well, it would seem to me, you know, just with some rudimentary knowledge that they would easily be able to go to, you know, websites like Exploit Database and just scrape all the data from there and be like, okay, let's remove yeah, this then, from our database. Yeah, but then hackers would use Zanda, uh, Yandex. Okay, so so it's like basically, it's just like well, they're going to do it somewhere. It might as well be our service. Yeah, I mean, like, and the, or like if you really want to do this, you can go over to Shodan, which we'll do for mm -hmm. another okay. episode. Um, and we might even touch a little bit on Shodan and how it works mm -hmm. because a lot of this translates over to it. So, so Shodan, by contrast, is the, the opposite of Google. They yeah. scrape everything. And this is often on behalf of hackers who live in countries where it's not legal to do a port scan. So oh. Shodan is then a paid service for them where they mm -hmm. can just pay them. Shodan does all the scanning, provides them with the results. And people in Germany, for example, that can't do port scanning, why? Okay. Why? By so way, is Fing not even like legal there? Like you can't um, download. You can port scan your own network, but probably not other people's. <laughs> wow, port okay. scanning's not a crime. Yeah. Um, sorry, Germany. But um, anyway, oops! Uh, I just pressed the button. I didn't know what it was gonna do. Yeah, it's yeah. So, sorry. but like things like Shodan basically fill that gap for people who can't actually mm -hmm. do port scanning or don't want to do port scanning. Maybe they don't want their fingerprints on it, and they would just want to pay someone right. else to do it. So um, that's why, you know, if it's not available on Google, it would just be available on mm -hmm. Shodan. And Google, I, I think, really doesn't have any vested interest in making sure people don't get access to a database when, you know, it's been left open unex right. and unexposed. Although I am sure that there's some protection built in because I see that there's this pretty steep drop off in some types of exposed database mm -hmm. logs, for example. So yeah. I think Google's made a conscious choice to stop, like, indexing some, like, really troublesome right. ones or at least providing as many results. Well, so, for example, if it went ahead and indexed a page of my website, Site that and then I realized, oh, I don't want that on Google. Is there a method to like contact Google and get it removed? Yeah, yeah, I think you can get it removed. You can okay. get it de indexed somehow. Yeah, I've never asked them to do it because, gotcha. but I know that is a thing. You can okay, then and at least you do have some recourse if you do realize you've uh, messed, messed up, up a little too much. Yeah, yeah, I think if you like, you're just like, oh no, like my whole database was live. Like, first off, take it down. Yeah. It was like making sure that, that, like, you know, like getting the Google listing is like taken. That's probably the least of your worries. If Best SEO page. ever. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess. Yeah. But anyway, let's take a look at this. So, um, so there's some, before we go through this, it's going to look a bit jumbled, but we can already mm -hmm. see, like, in URL, admin login dot do. Like, I don't know what dot do is, but admin login sounds pretty important to me. So you can kind of see that like we're going to be using a couple things. One mm -hmm. is these keywords that we use with then a colon and then something. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other is quotes. And quotes are for exact searches. And that means we're basically saying it must contain this string. And if it doesn't, we don't want to see it at all. And that is something where we can start to cut these down. And for, as an investigator, let's say that um, I'm going to, who do I always do? John Mac McAfee. Yeah. Um, Let's do, let's, so let's start to play with these. We'll come back to the exploit database. I just wanted to show some of these advanced ones. And honestly, mm -hmm. I probably can't even open some of these on our stream because they could be a Veronis yeah. customer. So like, so, I don't, you never know what's going to pop up on these. It, you just never yeah. know because uh, there's always businesses or government entities that have mm -hmm. left these databases just open. I, I hesitate to even run it. Yeah. But 
Sorry, you were saying. Uh, I was going to say, so so these dates are just what? When people have submitted that? Or is yes. it like, actually, is this website actually yeah, so these are So these, these are security researchers who have submitted these in the course of their research. Okay. And if you click on any of them, uh, let's say in URL, forget passwords.do, um, no. It should give you more information about what this door okay, does. Okay, so so even if that were to get removed eventually, this website still has some of the information about what that dork did, or or will this only let me like just go to Google myself and dork it? So the, it even says various uh, pages containing forgot password portals. Um, so if we want, let's say that we have a uh, so okay, let me explain what this is kind of OSINT for. If we were a hacker that has a script that can attack login portals, mm -hmm. this is a script to find it. all login yeah. portals, which we can then feed that list to our bot and attack stuff. So let's, mm -hmm. I'm just going to click on it. And I love the exploit database because okay. here you go. Oh, no, not math works. <laughs> math is cool, guys. Aw. Math's so fun. We and you forgot your again. password. Uh, so let's say that we were a hacker and we mm -hmm. want to go after all this stuff. We could use this as the first layer. We're like, all right, first I need to find all the password login mm -hmm. websites, and then I can use more specific search per terms like uh, in URL HTTP. Let's see if that works. And then maybe I'm able to find uh, websites that are allowing me to reset my password, which also don't use security. Did I do that? Maybe not. But we'll have to try out some more stuff and see if we can get it to work. Yeah, these all look like HTTPS, which good for mm -hmm. them. Um, but this is just an example. Oh, no. OK, it did work. All right, so now I have a uh, connection is not secure, and someone uh, that was looking for maybe older websites that don't mm -hmm. include that sort of thing would be able to take a look at the content that was floating yeah. through that website. So that's not good. Yeah, so that's a question we get a lot is like, oh, HTTPS is everywhere now. It's completely replaced. But so with Google dorking, you can absolutely find those handful of sites that are still using HTTP. Yeah, so let's get into this. So we're going to use a couple of these examples. Normally, people just drop a big fat list, and they're just like, these are the ones, and you kind of have yeah. to sort through them. Let's just use a couple of these for constructive searches. So let's say I want to find middle schools that are still using HTTP uh, on their website. Why? Because I constantly have to come up, of, uh, come up with examples of HTTP websites. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I'm always just like middle schools. Like they're, you know, they're the middle child between like high school and grade school and elementary school. So the kids are only in middle school for a little bit of time. So like they probably don't care about their websites, right? It's like, yeah. why bother? So I'm usually right. So when I have to do like a null byte video on like why uh, to, why you should be using HTTPS and provide a bad example, I'll just go in and be like, all right, I want to find uh, in URL um, dot edu. And then, uh, oh my god, UCLA, that's probably <laughs> No. <laughs> and then I can start to look for examples that are maybe, oh, OK. No, 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 OK. So these are, let's go back and look at some of the specific, uh, oh, I need to use quotes, maybe. Let me double check mm -hmm. that. Best tutorial ever. Hey. Oh, it hates it. And, and so quotes are just designating streams. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I thought so, but apparently not. So let's go on to one that I know does work. So okay. this one is um, in title, index of. And if we search, we can also do in URL FTP. And so, what this string is basically doing is saying, I want to find all FTP servers. Uh, I'm also adding an after. So this is after 2019. And if I got rid of this, then it would show everything. Okay. So um, let me, I'm still, I'm still stuck on this middle school thing. So um, when it says, when you say 2019, does that mean just it indexed it more recently than 2019? Yeah. OK. So it's just making sure the content is fresh. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. I don't know why I'm so. Or is it able also hey. to detect when a page was last updated? I just want this to be HTTP <laughs> so bad, you guys. I'm sorry. And I don't mean to pick on middle schools. I'm just yeah. saying, like, if you're statistically looking for a group of, of websites that are going to like load slow and like not have good security, middle schools, you could sell yeah. great. So middle schools should get Veronis. That's all I'll say. Whoa. Because, you know. Amazingly, this uh, is not secure. How how could that be? Um, oh, okay. calamity. Yeah, I know. Um, so horror. when I say it's not secure, I mean that if I were to try to log into this, Oh, yeah, I can't. It probably doesn't even rate limit it. You can just brute force it. No, no, we're not going to do that, Michael. All right, so. You know, just if you were a middle school student at this particular middle school. No, no. OK, 
So uh, I'm gonna, I need to not go in monitor mode. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna assume, I can do this a couple different ways. So first I'm gonna go into Wireshark and I wanna see if I can just show off this, uh, this process of why this matters and why hackers would be looking for a website like mm -hmm. this. So we're gonna turn off monitor mode. We're gonna start, I'm just gonna sniff my own packets because uh, that's fun. So you can see most of this is just um, stuff going back and forth. I'm gonna look for HTTP. Uh, and right now I don't see anything, but let's say I go ahead and try to log in. Hopefully this works, otherwise it just wasted everyone's time. And I'm gonna do, a, oh, I have to no, undo no script. Calm down, allow it, it's just a middle school. Too secure for your own good. Yeah, so then I'm gonna type in my big password, and my password is middle school uh -oh. is okay. <laughs> And then like a, a slashy face. Oh, because you got to be extra secure. Yeah. On your HTTP. In regular characters. Yeah. So then I'm gonna log in with my, you know, and then invalid Super credentials. How dare you, giant? Oh, never mind. That eagle looks ripped. I'm not gonna mess with it. All right, but let's see. Did I get it? Oh, I didn't. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Let's see what I did get. Um. So I have a bunch of UDP stuff. Am I using? A VPN? That would mess everything up. Of course you're using a VPN. I might not be. I usually try to turn it off for this sort of thing. But let's see if I am using a VPN. I am using a VPN. OK, well, if you're using a, a VPN, then you won't be exposed. Well, you go to websites that are potentially vulnerable. Yeah. All right, now all this stuff is public. So Seriously, though, that's one of the main reasons to use a VPN, right? My experience at middle school was fine, slashy face. Let's try logging again. Oh yes, save that one. What? Did you, did you just get uh, internet kill switch on your VPN? No, 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 I would never do that. Oh. Uh, let's teach HTTP, did I get anything? Yeah, hey. okay, so I got stuff. So, okay, so we've managed to intercept some stuff. It may or may not be interesting. It may be a login attempt. If I double click on it, we can see we've got a bunch of text. Mm -hmm. What else is here? Uh, another one. And if we look, we might even be able to see our password in there somewhere. Uh, control F search. Oh my god, can I do that? Oh wait, line based. Oh, it's just a success. Oh, sorry, I was looking in the wrong thing. It's all the way at the bottom. Come back. Oh, it's a get request. Okay. Let's keep alive. Oh, did it not go there? Is it just a parameter in the get request? Maybe, maybe. But I'm going to try this. I'm not even. Do you have to even use Wireshark? Could you not use like the inbuilt uh, debugging tools in Firefox? Mm. To um... maybe it hates me logging in. Am I not just not connected? That would be unfortunate. No, I'm connected. All right, fine. I'm just gonna go to this other middle school then. Maybe they'll let me log in. My big password. My username. That's not even it. Log in. Don't save. Okay, well that let me do it. All right, and I have all sorts of HTTP Ooh, stuff. Wow. This, this website's a lot loud. I know, much, it is. Much louder. Yeah, exactly. So cool, cool. If I go down, there's all types of stuff. I don't even know which one of these has my password, but I guarantee mm -hmm. you one of them does. Uh, E-tag, responses. So, oh my god, that's a lot. Um, I don't want to dig through all this. I just know that it's full of, oh wait, I can probably search through the text here. No, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Yeah. But I do just want to show that like, I'm able to intercept all sorts of information. Um, including passwords including, when it's not encrypted. Exactly. I'm still yeah. obsessed with like seeing if I can get this. But no, I'm not. All right. So we're, we're doing dorks today. We're not picking on middle schools. Right. I said I wouldn't, and then I did. Oh, look, the login. It's a login request. Is it's it? in there somewhere. Um, yes. Yeah. But uh, I'm not going to hold up the episode on proving that, that middle school sucks. Yeah. Oh my god, it's here. It's here somewhere. I know it's like right there. Get script resource. Is that the login? Is it base64? Maybe they base64 it. I'd be so proud of them. That oh, would be wow. some middle school level security. <laughs> yeah. You know, no one's going to hack us with base64. Sorry, I just love digging through these packets. Okay, I'm over it. Um, so anyway, we were able to find this uh, this website that's not using HTTPS just because mm -hmm. of our Google Dork. And this is true of a lot of different services. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I went through down and, the And so what other kind of attacks would you be able to perform on HTTP websites? So you were just demonstrating the fact that maybe someone could do some sort of man-in-the-middle attack and potentially mm -hmm. 
uh, capture a password that was being transmitted between you and the website, mm -hmm. particularly if you didn't have a VPN running. Mm -hmm. um, but like, why would those sites be interesting to hackers otherwise? Well, because if they have any sort of login, it becomes so easy to fish them that it's not even... Okay. Like, once a hacker's on your network, they can redirect you, and there's just no encryption whatsoever. So serving mm -hmm. you a fake version of that page, there's no protection against okay, that Okay, so they could clone your website and then serve it up in a phishing email or it like be any hotspot or something like that. It would be to tell if yeah. someone was like DNS redirecting you to that website because there's no certificate. Like mm -hmm. your, your browser doesn't know what to look for. Right. So like if it does have a certificate, then at least it's like, hey, there's no certificate here, and it slaps a big warning mm -hmm. on it. But you know, if you don't, if you're not using one, then it's impossible yeah. to protect your users from that sort of attack. Okay, and, and doesn't uh, Chrome and Firefox usually have uh, warnings that pop up? With we went these? to two of those middle school yeah, websites. Yeah, I guess there's a big warning. Yeah, I, usually they just use that little lock icon in the top corner of the URL. But... Yeah, I mean, if it's if they think it's like malicious, they'll like they'll warn you and stuff and, right. and do the big page. But if it's just HTTP, if it's just HTTP, they like scold them lightly wow. by giving them a little broken like lock or whatever. But like it's it's yeah. not like they're they're really enforcing it. Mm -hmm. It's just like you never know if you're connecting to the legitimate version right. of that website. And, and how many and how many users really are constantly looking at that lock? Like right. I know I'm pretty security conscious, and I I wouldn't notice that probably half the time. Right, right. And the consequences, like you just don't know. Somebody could intercept um, that on its way into the data center, mm -hmm. you know, potentially anywhere along the route that is unencrypted. So if you use a VPN, then at least like someone locally wouldn't be able to DNS spoof you because they can't mm -hmm. see where you're going. So that's pretty that's pretty nice. Although I did see a bunch of um, like MDNS going out over my system, like even though I was using a VPN, so stop it. <laughs> But anyway, so here's another example. I don't know why a zoo is the, the top result, but we're just looking for um, an FTP server that's exposing its index. So in this case, we're, okay. we're combining a couple of things. We're saying we want to find something that has index of, which means it's an open. It's it's not requiring a password. Mm -hmm. That's our first requirement. We want uh, in URL FTT, uh, FTP, so file transfer protocol, and then we also want it to be recent. So I've also included after 2019. Okay, so can you just go over quickly what each of those parameters is doing? So in URL is just... So a string. It, so, but we don't have to put that in quotes. Um, so, uh, sorry, yeah, uh, in URL is just specifying the protocol. So it, it's a flag to Google that says without quotes, it's um, one yeah. of the available options, basically. Okay, gotcha. So the in title is something that's just a string. It's not a preset option. We're just right. passing a string to it. And the after is um, a value that needs to be exact, so and, it's not inside a string. And, and does that have to be a year, or is, like what format is after? Um, uh, after is a year, but I believe you can make it more specific. Okay, because I think with Google, you can do like... Uh, like within the last twenty four hours, like this month, yeah. this yeah, year. you can make it. You can make it more recent too. And yeah. I mean, there's obviously Google search tools that are graphical. Yeah, that's for where that, I was thinking. But they cut off. Um, you know, you can see you can do okay. The last uh, hour, twenty four hours, mm -hmm. week, month, year. But then like you know, the right. options after that become like custom range. It's yeah. easier sometimes to just put this in and be able and, to limit your and results. And where would I find the flags or the values that I can put in there? So like you put twenty nineteen, but how if I wanted to designate like the past twenty four hours, how would I do that? Uh, I would say just check out Google Advanced Search. Okay. So there's a website compiled of like all of these. Well, so Google Advanced Search is the graphical interface for all of this stuff. Oh. So um, if you want to try it, then like here are all the different flags you can possibly set. Mm -hmm. um, language, last update, anytime, past 24 hours, okay. past year. So it's literally just a GUI. Yeah. GUI. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you can do a lot of that stuff. Although um, the last update is actually the same anytime. Hmm, it's not as exact as I thought. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, is there any official Google documentation on this? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna just say date dorking. Oh wow! Well. I, <laughs> I forgot that there's <laughs> dorking. <laughs> the dorking cape. Hi, if anyone's from watching uh, uh, in dorking the UK. Yeah. I, it's, I think you just nice got there. trolled by Google. Giggle. Uh, smart solutions, Google Doc. I just want to see for a quick reference, because mm -hmm. um, I honestly don't remember. Oh, Wikipedia's got an article on it. Yeah, it does. Why do we even it's need you at this point? It's a thing. Um, oh, God, this is going so slow. I'm just going to go to the next one. I like your yeah. question, but I'll answer it later. Oh, wait, here we go. Dates. Um, not updated, updated. Up Okay, well, this sucks. Sorry. 
I'll answer that question later. Let's just move on to the next. Well, mm -hmm. actually, no. Let's go back to the zoo. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. <laughs> yeah, we got to find out what these animals are up to. Yeah, OK. So here we can see FTP servers. I want to go to the zoo because I'm bored. And here we can see Oh, um, that's not that, pretty. Uh, it's, oh, it's because I have no script on. <sighs> too secure. It's just like, I don't want this stuff loading. I'm, I, here we go. And so for anyone Ooh, that doesn't. Look at this. I bet it's a honeypot. Bad bot protection by antibot.cloud. I don't know who that is. Ooh. So is that common for so, uh, there to be honeypots on when you're Google dorking? It's like your IP. I don't care that you know my IP. Press allow to verify that you're not a robot. Look at all this anti. Wow. Yeah, seems this seems like, like someone's like, gotten okay, dorked once all right, or twice. All right, so yeah, it seems like. Um, whoa. This is too racy. Okay, so this is a honeypot. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have to have uh, some sort of blur over that. My job just got a little harder. Yeah, so somebody put up a honeypot yeah. that basically is designed to look as it like an FTP server. So be aware that if you SEO stuff on Google, it will come to the top. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so... That is hilarious, and I was worried about getting like a, a Google, uh, like Verona's customer that was uh, vulnerable. <laughs> but instead, we just went through a honeypot. So yeah. what's interesting about this is first we went through a tracking server, so it got our IP address, the orientation of our computer, like a bunch of other stuff, and second, it redirected us to a nonsense website. Mm -hmm. So someone is effectively just using a honeypot technique to look at people that are uh, automatically scanning for this with like an interesting like twist in that it tried mm -hmm. to figure out if we were a bot or not by throwing up something an automated bot wouldn't be able to work with. Hmm. So pretty interesting. It's uh, yeah. a site that was designed to look for people who are deliberately looking for this as well as catching bots yeah. and uh, gathering their IP addresses, of which it just caught mine. So, so what would be the benefit of running a Google dork honeypot? Like just seeing who's Google dorking what? Or is there like some like counter hacking thing going on? Or All right, let's say that I'm a hacker that develops a script to attack FTP websites. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to build a script that I'm lazy. I don't want to like look for targets myself. I'm going to build a script that's going to use Google dorking to identify the top 50 um, mm -hmm. results. And then I'm going to have the script go after them. And that script is going to reach out, do its payload, do its thing, and then you know come back. Mm -hmm. If I'm a security company and I want to give a big um, FU to the hackers, um, I'm going to go ahead and pay a little bit in SEO to have my honeypot be like the second result right. so their script always hits it and then sell that information to companies who want basically a list of bad uh, malicious IP addresses and oh. even throws in the ability to detect like somebody who's mm -hmm. deliberately going to that link and then be like hey here's a here's a nasty website uh, yeah. as opposed to someone who's just running a malicious bot. So really a lot of information came out of this. Mm -hmm. the, whoever was running that website was able to get the IP address of, of active people who are Google dorking, as well as the IP address of automated malicious attackers, and can probably do a little bit of analysis. Because mm -hmm. that honestly reminded me of uh, Joel Grabify. Yeah, grab, that's what I was thinking. To Grabify link, you could grab all kinds of information about the browser you're running, like your screenshot size. You could fingerprint the person, so that even if they were using proxies to change IP addresses and stuff like that, you could have a better uh, idea of who they are and potentially block them in the future or build a blacklist to help protect your website. Yeah, so this is a known technique. And yeah. this is a really good example. There are honeypots out there. And if you fall into one of them, just make sure you're using a VPN, mm -hmm. uh, unlike me, because I just turned it off for this demonstration. Right. Well, some of those Grapify things would even go through a VPN, correct? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and just so anyone what that's not familiar with some of the terms we're using, FTP would be a file, file transfer, transfer protocol. protocol. It's a server uh, commonly used to transfer files. Um, and SEO is search engine optimization. It's basically ranking higher on Google. Yep, yep. So with just a little bit of money or free credits when you sign up, yeah. you can make basically anything rank for a while or for very specific search terms. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's probably not a lot of companies that are like clamoring to like rank highly for like dorking terms. So as a result, like you can position uh, you can position something that would effectively be able to troll people mm -hmm. that were running automated uh, attempts or trying to just do a live yeah. stream. <laughs> Come on. Uh, and so if you are getting deeper in that countermeasure and counter countermeasure sort of thing. What can you do if you're Google dorking to protect yourself from these honeypots? Um, you can do a couple things. So one of them is you can look at the cached version. Um, the cached okay. version might allow you to take a passive look at it and be like, hmm, I want to look at an older version. Yeah. Um, you could also look at the Wayback Machine. Uh, uh, or the Internet Archive and see uh, a snapshot of what mm -hmm. it looks like if you're really paranoid about it. Okay. Um, 
Will yeah. the Wayback Machine automatically log uh, sites that Google is indexing, or because no, I've gone to websites won't. before and, and like it won't have anything on them? Unless no, it someone... does it. It does some of its own crawling, but also some of it needs to be added manually. So okay. some of it will, and some of it will not. But it's just a resource, and there's also. Um, there's Chrome extensions that will allow you to be able to right mouse click on something and see like if it exists anywhere else, like things like that. So, right. Okay. Like those are all kind of helpful too. Um, or gotcha. allow you access to other things other than the Internet Archive. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. So um, hilarious. But you can also yeah. see that some of these are also uh, real file servers. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I'm just going to go well, back to this. When one. you say real, like how how can you definitively say that it's real? Right, I know. It's probably just yeah. another honeypot. But here, at least, we see that there's stuff exposed. It looks more realistic. Certainly. Yeah. And, um, but either way, this is the kind of stuff we would be looking for. So, so and, this, and it seems that honeypots are pretty common because Google Dorking's been around for quite some time, right? Oh my like God, forever. a decade or more, maybe? Yeah. Okay. So this is, again, just a big database. And Google just assumes you're an idiot unless you it, you give them very, very specific mm -hmm. search terms. So unless you're using these filters and basically saying, hey, Google, like stop with your nonsense. Like yeah. only give me things that contain this string, only from this date, and only mm -hmm. like with this particular thing also in the URL. It, it's it's going to treat you like you yeah. know what you're doing, and it's only going to give you those results instead of trying to please you by giving you everything right. that might match. And Google doesn't even do an exact search. When you when you do a, a Google search, it runs a bunch of searches that are, are it feels like could be related mm -hmm. in order to give you the most relevant results. But as a researcher, you don't want that. It's the opposite of helpful. So right. you really want to stick to like very targeted searches. So yeah. here's another example. Let's say that we have an exploit for like forms, and we want to find like active forms mm -hmm. um, that are using HTTP. Well, we can chain those. We can say, all right, so we want to have in the title form, okay. obviously, that's a string. In the uh, in the URL, we want to have HTTP, so we want to mm -hmm. be using that protocol. And then we, we want it to be recent, so after 2019. Well, that's when we got the um, Unity form. But okay. we can see it's freshmeat.sourceforge.net, so I'm not going to click on it based on my recent experiences on the internet. Yeah. Instead, I'm going to scroll down and... Roll of tanks? Official forum. Oh my god, your favorite thing. So if we're getting fish, then someone's done their research because Michael <laughs> loves cheating at World of Tanks. I, and look at this. World innovating. of Tanks, amazingly, as innovative as they, as they are, do not uh, encrypt their website. So if I were to log into my World of Tanks web, uh, website account... Oh, no, right. no, I'm not doing that I need fishing. To, oh no, I wouldn't do I wouldn't look... You we, know, ironically, we, you I've never a, even gone... Yeah, I've you got multiple world, accounts. Oh my god, on World of Tanks. On the forum? No, that's what I was going to say. Okay. The ironic thing is I've never even used the forums. Okay. All right. And I played that for like five years, too. Like, I'm, I'm a veteran. Wow, you can't even log into World of Tanks. I'm not trying to talk trash about your favorite game. I'm just saying. Yeah, that. yeah, that's more of what I would expect from the Wargaming Oh, yeah, site. no, I, okay, yeah, that's how Oh, but someone had a username saved there. Yeah, no, that's that's my GitHub name. Look uh -huh. me up. Okay. Yeah. Um, world of Tanks. Someone's been a secret World Do of Tanks player. Ball. No, no, no. That's my, it just auto-populates. Mm -hmm. All right. So I could also show that World of Tanks is insecure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that that it would be a waste of our time. I mean, with a name like that, it's got to be insecure. Yep. Okay. Um, so, all right. So that was, that was a lot. Let's take a look at this. Um, oh, my God. Supervision cam. What is this? So one thing we can also look for is a, the file type of log. So this, this is an automated type thing that is generated by a system that's maybe left open to the internet when it mm -hmm. shouldn't be. So one thing that's definitely popular uh, with uh, this sort of thing is looking for exposed log files or systems that were set up with permissions to just allow anyone to see them. So here, if we just do all in text, uh, password, file type log, and then after 2019, we're going to get recent log type uh, f files that also have in the password, uh, sorry, in the text password. If we run this, then we see, see supervision cam. I am so afraid to click on this. Oh, no. Uh, and then we get welcome to squeeze box and then uh, a bunch of text that goes on forever yeah. and a little blog. Um, okay. I'm just. And, and now, so uh, a kind of obvious question here, though why would these things be left exposed for anyone to see? Um, are, why would the default not be to private. And you don't have to have a license to own a computer. R OK. That's pretty much the entire um, reason why yeah. all this stuff is online. You know, they, people just hire like their cousin or right. whatever. So who, it's you know, misconfiguration. Like dropped out of middle school. Right. 
um, <laughs> after a cyber attack, uh, and you know, just be like, hey. Bill, like you got through most of the way through HTTP class, right? And they're just right. like, yeah. And then they set up their website and then that it's up there. So I'm actually not even going to wait for that to load because it's boring and also it's probably just going to be another honeypot. So here we have another one. The file type is env. And env files are another one that tend to be like super bad. These are like only mm -hmm. used in like automated systems like databases and stuff. And when these keys are left open, it means you can generally log in. This is a yeah. string, uh, or sorry, yeah, this is a search that will allow you to find db underscore password. Um, which is a variable that commonly has the database password. Amazing. Wow. Uh, and in this case, you can see that there's db username and db password completely exposed on some of these services, which we're not going to yeah. click on because, again, I'm, I'm tired of getting honey. I, that's what I was about to say. Is like, what are the odds of two results? One of them's actually a valid I'm database. I'm going to do it. I don't like being challenged. Here we go. Look at that. Hooray. Wow. Did we just dump database passwords no, no, on no. live stream? No, this is almost definitely a honeypot. But either way, so <laughs> this is the way that you could find potentially mm -hmm. um, businesses that are unintentionally exposing their log files. And again, like we're not getting a lot of results. Uh, this is after 2019. Mm -hmm. If I were to do after 2020, we probably wouldn't yeah. get anything at all. Um, it seems like Google has kind of stopped indexing these the way right. that they used to but they're still up there. Mm -hmm. So can we do anything more interesting? Well, let's see, we want email lists. This one is able to find emailing lists, although mm -hmm. again, as soon as we start filtering them by, day, uh, by date, then we start to get fewer and fewer results. Right. So if you do XLLS uh, file type, which is like an Excel file okay. type, and then in URL email.xls, we can find all these XLS files that contain mm -hmm. email addresses, which if I click on, I'm sure, won't be a honeypot. No, oh, it's a yeah, virus. Let's not, yeah, let's oh my not God. do that. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo, that was scary, you guys. Um, so yeah, we can like download all these viruses. This one looks like it's from Vietnam. Uh, this one looks like it's from, I don't know what that is. Um, Asian Taiwan. Country. Okay, so it's, um, it's from Taiwan. Um, but either way, I'm not gonna click on any of them, and you guys shouldn't either. Mm -hmm. But uh, just an example um, of what you could do. So let's go into something that's more fun. Yeah. Um, well, I was gonna ask, is there any kind of like, ethical Google dorking? Are there people that will go around and find these vulnerable databases and then go, you know, email the company and be like, hey, your shit's out, or your stuff's out. Michael, <laughs> I'm <laughs> so sorry. I'm sorry, any teenagers. Um, so, like, it's so like, you know, uh, like, reporting to these companies, hey, your, your stuff's online, you know, or going to Google and being like, hey, you should remove this stuff because, like, that shouldn't be on there. Well, if you're done with your obscene outburst, <laughs> yes, then I yes, as a matter of fact, um, there are some people who probably do that. Okay. That's all I have But to say. it's not like a big community or, or anything. Yeah. In general, this is the response you get from people when you report that their database is open. You either like, thanks, or I'm calling the police. I won't tolerate this harassment. Yeah. So it's like, it's usually like not. It's usually like not, you Fruitless. don't get a big pat on yeah. the back or like a reward. Like most of these businesses don't even realize like why right. you're talking to them. They're just like, well, something's they, online. Like, a okay. bug bounty program? What's that? Most of them will even deny it publicly. So it's like, because mm -hmm. it looks like bad PR for them. So okay. like there's not, it's kind of a thankless job. Anyway, so uh, another different dork we can do uh, is looking for specific versions of webcams. And this is one that I like because if we just do in URL top.htm, uh, in URL current time, and these are variables that a certain mm -hmm. uh, brand of webcam will typically have. I can then use the after 2019 to look for more recent versions, and we can see if, oh my god, I please, please don't be a honeypot. Hey, we have a laundry system. Oh, hey so now. here we're just making sure that everything's cool in the laundromat at this hour. It seems like everything's cool. Mm -hmm. Our job is done. Um, so this is just are a way. Are there any controls or anything? View video, system administration. I'm not gonna, so here's where we draw the line. If I no. try to log in here, then I'm a hacker and I'm doing bad stuff and I can get in trouble. Uh, Especially, I'm not even using a VPN. Yeah. So, so, like, so that's a good, good question idea. is, uh, where is that line on hacking in Google dorking? When you like, try when to log in. Okay. So this is fine, we just dork this, it's open, it's online, like no password, we can click on it. Like So if they left a password database just online, but without a login, like, I could. You could click on it. You, okay. It's, it's, it's on a Google link. Like, now whatever. we're not lawyers. This is not legal advice. Right, but, but if a, if, a, if a business like leaves their stuff online and it's indexed by Google mm -hmm. and it's a link that doesn't require a password to log in, like yeah, you might it's pretty have it automatically download a virus. But like you know, at the same time, yeah. it's like not that big of a deal. More likely than not, it's going to be a honeypot. This place but... seems so chill. Like oh wait, it's because I have no. No, do you ever find uh, like? 
uh, pan tilt zoom cameras and stuff like that on here where you I can... I have a, a creepy story about that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I one time found a pan tilt camera that was in someone's bedroom. Oh, didn't, no. Didn't no. require a password. And like I was like, oh, cool. And I like clicked on the controls to see if it moved left and right. And yes, it did. <laughs> and that doing it woke the person up who was in the room who was just like, what? And looked at the camera and I looked at them and I was just like, <laughs> No, no, yeah. no. That's not the kind of story that we uh, should be sharing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this stuff is just like, so if I get rid of after 2019, let's see if we can find any other just like whack cameras. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I actually love this. Um, here we can see someone has decided to um, advertise to, <laughs> what is this? What? They just have the camera on their collection of, that's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. That, that's like German, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, internet, internet camera home, let's see what's this one. So, I mean, you can just see that we're getting access to cameras that don't require any sort of authentication. Yes, I love this one, I found this one before. Oh, is Guys, it like a chicken coop please cam? please check out the bird cam. If you're stuck in quarantine or whatever, like, and you, you just don't know what to do, check out the bird cam. I find this every time I do dorking, and it's mm -hmm. at, um, uh, Stan Burleyville School dot Whatever, whatever it is. Oh, it's insecure it's a, too. That's a huge URL. Yeah, sorry. It's a school in the UK, Stanburyville School, and you get to just watch the birds. And right now there's freaking eggs. So you can check that out because it's excellent. So excellent. you find amazing things when you use Google Dorks. Um, and it's just in general a really, really mm -hmm. cool way of being able to start finding this sort of information. Let me see if there's any other juicy ones. But honestly, this is my favorite. We already went over um, how this is just malware. So actually, probably don't do this one. But, uh, LV app. So, okay. All right. So this is another one of the ones that I think I got from the database. No, I guess not. All right. Let's see. So um, LVAPPL.htm uh, is apparently something related to an exposed log file, or mm -hmm. at the very least, a JavaScript thing that, again, is going to fish me. <laughs> of course. I just, I've really been through it today. Yeah. I was going to say. At this point, no script's more annoying than it's uh, useful. No, it's absolutely fine. It has protected me so many times. a yeah. lot of things that probably have wanted to run. Yeah, it's probably just doing all sorts of terrible things to my computer. I'm getting like beef hooks yeah. run and, and whatever else. But in general, we can see that we have results here. I'm not going to go through this one because it apparently doesn't work. But back here, now having seen some of these examples, mm -hmm. we can see that a lot of these are designed to basically drill down on what we've already done right. and find specific instances of maybe vulnerable software. And any of these, um, admin login.php, like this one's like yeah. pretty obvious. Like the this Google Doors lists out PHP admin portals for a web server. If we have a vulnerability mm -hmm. that we know about right. that, we can find it, especially if we know the specific version and then maybe mm -hmm. only do ones that are after a certain time or before right. a certain time. Oh, so you can search for like specific versions of servers or software. It kind of takes the messing around. You have to find out like a specific string uh, okay. that is going to be like used in that. So once you know what that looks like when right. it's exposed, then you can. Um, yeah, so this must be extremely powerful to use when you have like a zero day or uh, more likely than not, it's just like some exploit that very recently came out and maybe it's unpatched on a lot of systems. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm sorry. I just want to see more webcams. That's all. I'm <laughs> okay. Um, so if we go. So that's the secret of Google dorking. Is it's all for webcams. It's all for webcams. You just find webcams. What's this? What are we gonna find? I hope nothing terrible. Um, oh, it's no scripting. Out. Oh, I was gonna say, be ready to blink away. Yeah, with the... beautiful. Okay, guys. Okay. So the last time we did this, they figured out where we were looking like that. Like they basically were like, it's a gas station. It's in Finland. I was there in my youth. If you guys can do that this time and tell me Ooh, arrows. where this is. is. that pan tilt? Um, oh, let's find out. Let's terrify these people. Um, oh, my God. It is pan tilt. <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. Okay. okay. So um, if, any, if we have any OSINT researchers on the show, please contact me on Twitter afterwards and tell me where this is. Um, oh. And I will give you a prize. So, so will... how would you go about doing something like that? Like finding like where this is. Clearly, it's somewhere where it's day right now, so we could narrow it down a hemisphere. Yeah, it's, like so that. the time, the local time is nine thirteen p.m., um, which we can which we can say is probably not right now. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, we record this a little bit early to remove the um, obscenities and also the the phishing websites that led us to a nasty website. But um, currently, uh, we can see. A little bit more information. Oh, uh, it's freaks. There, there's source one. Is there another source? Uh, is there another camera? Let me try multi view. Oh my god, there is. You are very smart, and I appreciate that. Okay, cool. So look, there's multiple You're welcome. cameras. I'm here all. You week. guys, where where is this? Someone, someone help me. Someone's um, 
retreat in the forest. Someone's retreating in the forest. Cabin in the woods, you could what say. What if it was just outside our house? <laughs> that if we had like port forwarded that, I would just have a stern talking to whoever Whoa. did that. Oh, okay. So there's no uh, there's no like zoom or anything. Okay, on so this. only one. Oh, by okay. The port. So guys, there's aspen trees. Clue. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. 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 There's um conifers. Clue. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. this red thing. Not really a clue. Not really a clue. That's pretty common. Okay. Um, there's source one. Let's go to. Uh, oh, there's no license plate on yeah. this, so I can't. Can see you it. zoom in? No, I can't. You got no. You got air. Uh, yeah, I can. Oh my god, I can. Can you? No, I can't. Okay. Um, and we have this crazy wind chime. Uh, we have above ground power poles. Yeah. OSINT yeah. research, you guys. Uh, and then we have. Again, just more. Yeah, too bad. I don't want to go inside this person's house. I'm so scared. Turn it. I keep turning it. Turn it. All right, we have a carport. I can't see any types of vehicles. More, Cody. More. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Is it in the window? No, they put a towel so we can't see it. Thank you for having us. You seriously can't turn it anymore? I can't turn it anymore. All right, guys. So this has been a presentation of how... We found some <laughs> random. Someone's probably just like the camera's crazy. <laughs> it's no possessed. Says, it keeps pointing at random nonsense. The motion detection's gone wild. Yeah, I am so sorry to whoever this is, but thank you for putting this camera out here. Um, oh, more. Oh, clues. there's definitely refre reflections. It's inside. In now. this society, they use wood. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Best Ozent researcher ever. Okay, so if you guys can tell us where this beautiful um, area. Um, is that has aspen trees and also conifers and also, um, I guess, trailers, please let us know. Um, and you'll win a prize of some sort. I don't know what, but I would just be impressed. Uh, last time people were able to find it immediately. This is pretty funny, but okay, I think that's, I think that's gonna do it for this one. That's pretty, uh, that's a lot. Um, wow, so as you can mm -hmm. see, Google dorking is a, an, a way that you can basically take any sort of file or webcam type or anything you want and find it using Google's spiders that go out and find everything on the internet. And this can be passwords or it can be totally open web, yeah. uh, webcams that are pointed at things that allow you to control a webcam without authenticating. Mm -hmm. So what we did today was we actually took control of a webcam legally. Yeah, true. Uh, and, and because there's no password. So we just clicked on a website, mm -hmm. there was buttons, we clicked on the buttons. And we didn't try to brute force, we didn't try to log in, we didn't even click log in. This is something that was totally left wide open. And if you guys want to go to the bird cam, if you guys want to look <laughs> around the Aspen whatever, as far as I know, there's no password here and you're not breaking and entering. And unless you're making a nuisance of yourself, um, you know, it should be fine. Yeah. So maybe you don't do it while people are sleeping. Uh, it looks like it's daytime. <laughs> uh, wherever this is, where is it? Yeah, and so as a final note, uh, what takeaways uh, should the viewer have about protecting themselves or their servers or websites from these Google Dorks. Show Dan and, and uh, Google yourself. Okay. Um, so look at all the results. Like do some of these Google Dork results on your website and mm -hmm. be like, do I have any PDF files exposed? Is yeah. that important? Do, do a site any, search. Do I have any log yeah. files open? Um, you know, it's just a really quick way of taking a look at whether or not there's anything that's exposed that shouldn't be. And I mean, if you have a webcam or something else that's exposed, like. It maybe maybe you know take a look mm -hmm. at the and see if the public address like if it resolves outside your network and if right. it does that means that pretty much anybody can see your login portal. Mm -hmm. So if you have one of these webcams that's you know using an app and you go out of your home and it's still working yeah. and you don't remember setting that up, it means it's port forwarding and it's available yeah. somewhere. And if that you know if the business that's doing the the, the forwarding for mm -hmm. you isn't you know having that login yeah. secure then you could have some convenience iot device that's just like you know somehow getting the, right. the camera footage to you even when you're not at home that means it's on a server somewhere and if it's not secure people might be able to see it and even as we are currently um, doing control it so yeah so so if you uh you should definitely go and check your router and check port forwarding settings and make sure that nothing's port forwarded or if it is you absolutely know what it is and that it's behind like some sort of login at a bare minimum preferably like brute force limited or, or something like that because if it is exposed even with login that's not going to protect you right like a lot yeah. of these are going to be easily brute force a, a 12 year old could write a google dork that automatically finds you know sites with a vulnerability and then does a, an attack against mm -hmm. it it's like this is such like treaded territory right. at this point like we've really had this around for such a long time that yeah. there are now some defenses to this sort of thing but yeah if you want to invite hackers to knock on your door put up a, a vulnerable website and open your right. port 80 to the internet and see what happens yeah i was gonna say gonna, it seems you're like you're gonna have a bad time 
Yeah, it would be really easy to write a Python script, for example, that goes through searches for open SSH ports and then, you know, runs a brute force attack with the two million most common login combinations. Yes, and people do that. Yeah. Um, and then they go to DEF CON and they, they show it off. And I yeah. interview them sometimes. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And so who do we have to thank for this video? Um, so this video was sponsored by Michael. That's yes, because I shower this with Just money. Just kidding. Michael doesn't have any money. So instead, Baronis was boy. the sponsor of this video. So a big shout out to them and thank you for allowing us to continue doing these live streams. And if you like them, please make sure you go to the Security Forward YouTube channel. That's where we have all of these archived. You can watch any of the ones we've done in the past. Some of them kind of lead up to this. And if you subscribe, it lets everyone know that you like this content. Also make sure to share it if you know anyone that would enjoy this content too. All right, cool. cool. Thanks. See you next time. Yeah, see you next time. Bye.